Hello, my name is Sarah Russo. I'm a second year MBA student and Center for Digital Strategies Fellow at the Tuck School of Business at Dartmouth College. I'm pleased to welcome John Lester, Director, Community Development at Reaction Grid as part of the BRIT Technology Impact Series. Welcome to Tuck, John, and thank you for being here. No, it's great to be here. Thanks. Since our topic for this year's BRIT series is the business of social, we've heard a lot about how businesses are incorporating social media into both internal interactions among employees and external actions with customers. Can you tell us how you've seen companies use virtual worlds successfully with their employees or customers? Well, virtual worlds are a really powerful tool for deep immersion in content. Uh, you can simulate a physical space and customize it however you like and then fill it with people. So consequently, that makes it a very compelling tool for situations where you're trying to really immerse yourself in, uh, in content. So for example, if you're working on some type of a prototype in a company, um, you, know, you can share documents of the product in, 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 uh, as 2D drawings. Or in a 3D environment, it gives you the capacity to actually create a space and create a model of what you're looking at, of what you're working on, and then have people as avatars communicating with each other and even manipulating and modifying and interacting with the model in, in real time. So that's one way that it can be used uh, internally. And, and, and obviously when interacting with customers, if you're trying to you know, immerse your customers in a particular type of experience or maybe uh, creating a focus group or something like that, um, uh, you know, the 3D space has certain affordances that are just much more, uh, much more compelling than something like sending around an email or even doing something like a video conference. Great. Um, I, my next question is what advantages do virtual worlds offer over online meeting tools or video conferences? You know, it's really, it's, it's really a, a matter of the right tool for the right job. You know, mm -hmm. there are a lot of things where uh, you have mediums, you have communication mediums with much uh, less perceptual immersion and less emotional bandwidth like say email or you know, Twitter or or, uh, or things like that, where that type of communication makes sense. Uh, at the same time, things like video conferencing are great to get a sense of the person's real-time physical appearance, yet video conferences don't happen in a particular place. They're sort of spaceless. You know, video conferences happen with everyone sitting in front of their computers, and there, you're, there's no shared space. Uh, while you can do things like uh, with products like WebEx, where you have sh sort of shared documents while you're communicating, and even Google has done a lot of work with, uh, with Google Docs, and. Uh, where you can actually be communicating with chat while you're collaborating on a document in real time. Um, you know, there are still certain times where you want to have a, have a shared space that you are modifying around you that is perceptually immersive. You know, our minds are really designed to, to, uh, to best understand and to really enjoy three-dimensional spaces. So the trick is to think about, you know, say, if you're trying to, you know, like with education, for example, if you're trying to teach people um, a certain... Uh, process that involves a, s a physical space, like in a company, say, like working in a particular control room or something like that, where you have to collaborate with other people, uh, it really makes sense to kind of leverage what your brain does really well and create a simulation of that space that is, is, uh, is similar to the physical environment. And of course, with a three-dimensional virtual space, you have the capacity to you know, be free from the, the, uh, the tyranny of geography where you can actually easily get people physically into the same simulation area. Right. And on the other side, are there any reasons why you wouldn't recommend virtual worlds or reasons companies should be careful about using them or pitfalls to avoid? Yeah, well, you know, when you have a shiny new hammer, everything looks like a nail sometimes, you know, and you try to use it for everything. And I think that's a big mistake, but and that's one actually that we'd use all you know, that we have we have that tendency with any technology. So I think the trick is to be very thoughtful about, you know, okay, what am I trying to do here? What are what are your goals? Um, you know, the, the technology is, is amazing and has so many, you know, it's very dazzling. You know, you have a, I'm in a three-dimensional immersive environment. Wow, there are people there, there are avatars. And I can modify the environment around me. Um, that's really great, but I think it's important to simply just go into things first with a very clear identification of your goals and what your definitions of success are as well. And then once you have that, then it kind of naturally falls out, you know, oh, makes sense. We'll just do this via email and we'll do this via a shared document on Google Docs and then for the simulation we'll do the virtual space. And in my experience mm -hmm. the best solutions that I've seen are ones that encompass the entire spectrum of communication tools with each tool being used for the right job. Great. What do you think needs to happen for virtual worlds to reach wider adoption? Is it the technology, a culture shift, or something else? 
I think it's primarily the, the interface because you know the, the, the way you interact with a virtual world is you sit in front of a computer and you have an interface, the computer, which is actually designed for two-dimensional interfaces with the mouse being 2D and the keyboard being 1D, a serial line of text that you're typing in. Um, and it's complicated and it's, it's kind of clunky. Uh, in, my, in my opinion, um, what will really blow the doors off a lot of this will be advances in augmented reality where you will have the seamless integration of simulated environments with the physical. You know, with the uh, adoption of technology like, for instance, walls on a room could be an, an entire wall could be a screen. Right? And, and you're actually already seeing some of that if you drive down the highway and you notice how many billboards now are actually video screens and not paper. Um, so I think it has to do with the ubiquity of display environments that portray the, the, the simulated space and integrate it into the physical environment. So we're kind of at the stage right now where um, kind of where automobiles were. When, when automobiles were first invented, uh, they, really, they really did not take off until one very important thing happened, and that was when roads were really laid out in a way that interconnected cities and were nicely paved. So we've kind of got this great technology, virtual worlds, but the, the roads are kind of lousy. You know, it's hard to actually use them. Um, but once the affordances of uh, more ubiquitous display technologies and things like augmented reality that are, I think, um, uh, you know, they're still very nascent right now, in particular augmented reality. But once that really takes off, I think then you'll see the seamless integration of virtual and simulation spaces uh, in our daily lives. And at some point we won't really, you know, like we are with the phone right now, we don't, we don't think of the phone as something virtual, which it actually is. Uh, but it's with us all the time. And that, that leads me into my next question is, what's your prediction for what's next with social media and virtual worlds in the workplace? Where do you think we'll be three years, five years, or where do you hope we'll be? I think, well, like I said, with, with things like augmented reality and more ubiquitous display technologies, I think you'll see a more seamless integration of simulated spaces and things like uh, you know, malleable environments. You, know, you can imagine yourself being in a workroom where you are uh, you know, in, where instead of the ubiquitous whiteboard hanging on the wall, the entire wall is a screen, and you look at the screen, and it looks like there's another room on the other side, and that room could be full of, uh, of a completely simulated space that you could actually interact with. Uh, again, with things like augmented technology, and you look at advances like Microsoft Connect, which is a very cheap consumer level uh, interface, where you're, n you're also not interfacing with anything physical, you're just gesturing and doing movements that are then being interpreted by a, a system that is allowing you to then control the, the, the virtual space. So these things, I think, will over time be uh, very seamless and will be as common, you know, right now it's commonplace to be walking down the street and talking to somebody who's not there on your phone, and I think the same thing will happen over time with collaboration with organizations and businesses uh, and with customers, too, this, this virtual, physical um, uh, collapsing. John, on behalf of the Center for Digital Strategies at Tuck, I would like to thank you again for speaking with us today. I'm sure our listeners appreciate your thoughts and insights. This has been Sarah Russo for the Center for Digital Strategies at the Tuck School of Business.